I'm Gaz, and this is Let's Play The Occult Chronicles. This is a horror-themed roguelike board game, I guess you could say, and it's inspired by H.P. Lovecraft, and that's sort of horror. I thought it would be appropriate, what with Halloween around the corner, to play this. Uh, it is created by Cryptic Comet, the same company that made Armageddon Empires, which I have also done a Let's Play of. Let's start a new game. Now, I've played through the first few missions here, and unfortunately, they're all pretty much the same. Um, the maps are all randomly generated, but the puzzles and encounters are all the same throughout, except for the final puzzle. Um, so I will probably just play through the first mission here, the key and the gate. Um, if there's a little bit more interest in the game, maybe I'll extend it and do another one, but this is probably just a one-level game for me. So, the key and the gate. There have been rumors surfacing recently concerning the revival of a cult devoted to the tentacled ones. These creatures are said to be slumbering in an outer dimension and intent on returning to our world to assume their places as Earth's rightful rulers. Reports of missing young women from the neighboring town have kindled suspicion that the ancient Lovecraft estate might have new residents intent on some nefarious summoning or gate opening ritual. The stars do seem to be right for a ritual. You have precious little time remaining before a celestial conjunction not to be seen for another thousand years could be used to the cultists' advantage. Our analysts believe that a human sacrifice will be required. Uh, yeah, so I'm not just some guy. Uh, I am a member of the Occult Defense Directorate, or ODD. Uh, okay. So I'm going to tweak a few of these settings. First of all, I'm actually going to change the story speed down to nothing. Uh, kind of like the Arkham Horror board game, you have a certain amount of time to complete the game, but it's actually difficult enough without that, and I've actually gone through the first floor of this mansion uh, just spending half my time already, so... I would like to complete the game, so I'm just going to turn that off. I will leave the normal difficulty on, but I will turn the game mode to normal instead of Reaper. Reaper is, of course, just your typical uh, Iron Man mode. Once you die, that's it. But it also prevents you from saving, so in the interests of the Let's Play and uh, being able to complete it, I'll just turn that to normal. So. Character creation. First of all, enter my name. And let's see. For a background, soldier is pretty good. You saw it all in the Great War. You've been shot, bayoneted, and gassed while witnessing the horror of man's inhumanity to man firsthand. You emerged from the charnel house stronger and more determined than ever to find some meaning in life. The ODD seems to be the best place for now. So I like Soldier because it begins with a bone of swords, and throughout this game, uh, you'll kind of see there are tarot and, uh, I guess, other mystical sort of symbols used for uh, all the game mechanics, and the swords corresponds to combat, and you see I get quite a bit of the combat edge, as well as a random weapon, which is nice. Um, but plus one to swords is pretty good early on. So the bones here are basically used for certain encounters and certain abilities. And in order to be able to use certain options and certain abilities, you need a dice to be, or a die rather, to be able to roll uh, and get a result. So I'm going to start out with just your basic soldier. The mercenary is a little bit different, but otherwise it's pretty much the same. You get a, uh, a boost to your health, <coughs> boost to your health, as opposed to your swords roll. Uh, the other classes, I guess you could say, are pretty interesting. And later on in the game, sort of the mystical, magical stuff becomes really important. But uh, early on, survivability is good, just with basic combat stuff. So I will select soldier. And to complement that, I get to pick another bone. So I'm already getting a bone of swords. I think I'm going to pick a bone of wands. Wands corresponds to psychic talents 
but it also helps in a lot of the mystical horror based occult encounters. Uh, Pentacles is also really nice. You get a lot of interesting options later on that uh, are not accessible unless you have high pentacles, but I can get options later on to get a bone of that. And cups is basically for physical challenges and stuff like that. But uh, So there's no reason to get a, another bone of swords because you only use one bone uh, per thing. Uh, so I'll pick wands to complement. Which is good because now I have the ability to take on both physical combat and uh, the psychic occult stuff. Starting edge, you get a whole bunch of bonuses for whatever you want. I'm going to pick adaptive intelligence, which gives me additional cards based on the level of my edge. Um, this is a card based combat and I guess challenge system, like the, the tarot deck is used for everything. And so having the extra cards at the beginning of a challenge is really nice. Okay, so I need some points. I'm going to put three into swords, three into wands, probably two into cups and one into pentacles. Because there are a lot of traps early on that we'll need the cups for. Pentacles, though, it'd be nice to have another point in that just because, like I said later on, there are encounters and puzzles where we need high pentacles to be able to take care of them. Not going to be able to put much in the health and sanity, but uh, that's how it goes. Pick a portrait here. That one will work. Okay. All right, here we are. So, I've got my inventory opened up, I've got a shotgun, full ammo, that's nice, that's not always the case. I also come with the critical hit ability, which allows me to roll a bone, select some non-revealed face trick cards, and bump their value down. Okay, have to pay attention to that, and I have nothing else for now. So, we start out in the main foyer, and this is always the same. Well, I mean, you, you start out here, but the doors themselves are not always the same. Sometimes you'll have them in the uh, locations like this, other times they'll be elsewhere. Anyway, to get anything done, we need to go through some doors. Now, these doors up here will lead to the second floor, and we don't want to go up there yet. So let's just start going left. Oh, great. So a hallway full of body bags. Usually we're going to find a zombie in here. Hopefully I can avoid that for a while. So basically, we go around exploring these rooms. And there's nothing in this one that's unusual. Um, this is, is usually, I think, where we find a painting or some ghost dining. Okay. So there is a little question mark there. That is an encounter or a puzzle or something. Let's check it out. The Gentleman Ghost. You see ghostly wisps of smoke rising to the ceiling. You follow the wisps down to a large comfortable leather chair sitting in the gloom. Suddenly you see the illumination of a cigar end, and with that a ghost materializes sitting in the chair. I must resist the horror. You usually have to resist the horror every time you, or the first time, you encounter something. And uh, you can see down here by the symbol, it will utilize my wands and pentacle skill. Fortunately, I've got three in wands, so that offsets it. And you can see up there, underneath the picture, uh, it has the base difficulty, and then the modifier that I'm using based on the skill. And you can see it's using the modifier based on my wands. And then it shows the number of tricks, and the number of draws. So when we go in here, you will see that I have five trick cards, which means I have five opportunities to trump them using my cards and get this five number. Now I may not be able to do that, so I can't use, this isn't a combat ability, so I can't use the special ability on my shotgun. But I might, uh, I can't use that either. Okay. I think these usually turn green 
to indicate when you can use one of your special abilities. Okay, so I need to pick one of these cards. Damn it. And I basically need to beat it. Um, I'm probably not going to be able to do it. Nope. Too many goddamn face cards, and I don't have any cards that will be able to do this. So, I have failed horribly. Your mind is weak. When the ghostly smoke clears, you feel you have lost some small part of your sanity. Yeah. Okay, so now I get a bunch of cards here that I get to pick. And because I did so horribly, I have to pick three. And there's a chance that they will affect my sanity. This could be very devastating this early on. Now I have a talisman over here, and this talisman has a chance of showing up on these cards. And what that will do is that I can flip it over, and if something bad happens, the talisman will protect me from it. There's also a chance, however, it will consume the talisman. So, I mean, it's a good idea to always use them if you can, but uh, obviously I don't have one this time around. Okay, I just lost a sanity. If you lose your sanity or your health, game is over. Fuck. Okay, well, even though I lost that, I now get to encounter the ghost and deal with it. And I can try to dismiss it, communicate with it, or just run away. Sometimes you want to run away from things because the puzzle needs another encounter to unlock any interactivity. Fortunately, this is the beginning of a puzzle, so I will communicate with the ghost. You decide to use your psychic talents as a medium to try and find out what the ghost is doing here. He might have information that can help you. Now, my target is two, so that's a much easier chance of winning, but there's only two tricks. So I've actually got fewer opportunities. Even fewer now. Damn it! You sit down in the chair across from him and, and and enter a trance. Mistaking you for a servant, he thinks you are impertinent and refuses to acknowledge your attempts to communicate. Fuck. Okay, well I can try again, and this time I get a bit of a boost. You can see I get three tricks this time. Um, every time you uh, re-attempt something, you get a little bit of a bonus. Sometimes, though, it'll also boost the target number. Okay, this time I have a better chance of winning, provided I get a sword, which I did not. Are you fucking kidding me, game? Well, I'm gonna make this happen. Okay, finally. So, when you have one card that beats another card, you get two points. Now, if you have a face card, the face cards are worth different values, and they will add their value to the uh, the take. So, fortunately, I won. You sit down in the chair across from him and enter a trance. Mistaking you for a servant, he thinks you were impertinent at first, then realizes you still might be able to help him. He needs a favor done. Okay, the quest. Find the ghostly gentleman's missing cigars. Seems somebody else might have them, or know where to find them. And because I won, I also got to pick another card, but this time around, these would be benefits. Now, this is a, nothing of interest, so I didn't get a benefit, but sometimes you get your sanity back, sometimes you get your health back, and sometimes you get experience. Arumph, my good man, I'm almost out of my cigars here. Would you be kind enough to go and fetch me a few? The ghostly gentleman leans back and puffs out a huge column of ghost smoke. He fixes you in the eyes and says, there's just one catch, of course. More like an inconvenient challenge, actually. You'll see what I mean. Okay. And there's nothing in those corners, so I'm not going to go investigate them. Now, sometimes, though, it's worth doing that. And I guess since I'm not timing myself this time around, uh, I could just do that. Because sometimes you'll come upon clues. Now, clues, which will appear in your folder up here, uh, are useful towards the final encounter because they will reduce the target number or give you a bonus. Um, of course, every time you go through a spot, there's a chance for a random encounter. So, early on, it might not be such a good idea to go poking around because I am fairly weak, and especially now that I'm down to sanity. Okay, another encounter here. 
The butler's ghost, who was not in the usual part of the house. A tall, well-dressed figure looms into view, holding a silver platter in one hand as if to offer you an appetizer. Your eyes travel down to the platter, and behold half a human head. You feel a surge of panic growing within you. I must resist the horror. You've been trained to expect and deal with things like this. Even so, no matter how many times you see something like this, it still requires steady nerves to keep calm. Okay, well I've got one face card, but I've also got an ace, which is terrible. So I have to hope I can use that queen, and she is worth five points. Or maybe she's worth three and it adds to the two. Whatever the case, I have won. I get to keep my sanity. Are you the head waiter? You drolly inquire. Ha ha ha. Damn it. Standing in front of you is the figure of what was obviously once a butler or servant. You say once because you are sure that what now confronts you is a supernatural entity of some sort. It is the most corporeal ghost you have ever encountered. You have read of such things in Tobin's spirit guide, but you are certain this is very unusual. You approach the butler and his glowing eyes are fixed on you. The head on the plate suddenly stares up at you as well. May I help you, sir, it intones, and you are not sure if you actually heard its voice in your ears or just in your head. Okay, this is another quest, so let's try and communicate with the butler. I've got a king. Doesn't matter because I made a trump. Okay. Despite his calm demeanor, the seemingly corporeal apparition of the butler is quite distressed. It seems the chef has botched preparation of the master's dessert. He desires your help. Okay, so now I need to find the chef. The butler wants you to go find the chef in the kitchen and order him to prepare the master's dessert again. He says the master will be pleased and promises to reward you if you help him out. Okay. Well, how many more rooms do I want to go through here? One more. Okay, that's a hallway. With a locked door. A strange locked door. Let's open this one. And there's an encounter right there. Let's open this one, too. Okay. Well, that's a useless lock because I can just go circle in there. Let's head to this room first. The Weeping Wall. You see a section of wall whose plaster long ago began to peel away. However, something doesn't seem quite right. Your eyes catch the faintest glimmer of reflected light from some pattern on the wall. You can swear you hear the faint beating of a heart. Suddenly you realize the wall is weeping blood, and then you feel an unspeakable evil presence try to embrace you. You struggle to maintain your composure as you feel a building desire to scream grab a hold of you. I must resist the horror. Okay, that's two points. Get rid of that. I hope I can get the... Okay. Your will is stronger than the evil embedded in the wall. You fight back the building urge to scream and panic and then relax as you master your fears. Nothing. The wall weeps blood in pulsing rivulets. You can hear the faint beating sound or perhaps you are merely imagining it. It mixes with the broken plaster and pools at the base of the wall, draining slowly between the cracks on the floor. You notice a large gash that seems like laceration. There's something evil and malign pulsing within the wall. Some eldritch sorcery has left its taint here. As well, you should proceed with caution. I can dispel the sorcery or leave it alone, and I will leave it alone for now because it is a puzzle that I will come back to. Okay. Well, it's been a little bit of time. So I think this is a good start got a few puzzles and I can go to the quest here and check them out not too difficult this room I believe has another one in it or something we can check out and a very unnecessary locked door um, I might want to complete that anyway just because I might get something good out of it but that's enough for now so I'll end this one here and see you next time